I'd like to invite uh, Lauren Boyer, who's a director of uh, Eastern Roots, uh, to share the amazing journey of the Northeast uh, best birding and wildlife destinations. So over to you, Lauren. Hmm. Hi. Uh, can you see my screen? We can. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, so first of all, I'd like to, to thank uh, Julian and Ritu for uh, the opportunity my paradise, my, um, my little corner of paradise in the Northeast, which is quite uh, unknown. And uh, yeah, most of people already don't know about Northeast and it's only after traveling uh, three, four times in India that they get to know that, oh, this part of, of India, is, is this part of, of the, on the map is, is part of India actually. Uh, so actually Northeast is um, mainly dominated by hills. You can see on the pictures, uh, it's quite a hilly terrain and it's dominated also by the floodplains of uh, the Brahmaputra. Uh, and it's, it has been um, uh, restricted to foreigners uh, for many years only at the beginning of the, the, the year 2000, we can see uh, foreigners starting to come in, the, in this part of, of India. Uh, so it's very important to know that it has been uh, uh, elected one of the most important biodiversity hotspot in the world. Not only one, actually, it's two, because it's, uh, it's at the confluence of two biodiversity hotspots. One is the Himalaya and one is the Indo-Burma. So I'm just going to show you a, a map uh, so you can have a, a, a better picture of it. So you can see the, the, the Himalaya here in, um, in, in pink and the other one is the Indo-Burma. So northeast being here, it's, it's just at the confluence divided by the Brahmaputra of the, the two biodiversity uh, hotspot. It has uh, among the eight states of the Northeast, 37 national park and 137 wildlife sanctuary, which is huge uh, uh, in, in, um, in India compared to the other states. And uh, about 850 species of bird have been registered among the, the eight states. Uh, which are Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Sikkim, Manipur, Mizoram, and I think that's the eight. I haven't forgotten. Um, and among the 850 species of birds, we have 50 globally threatened and 30 near threatened species. And as I said before, it is. Uh, quite preserved for mass tourism, as very people know about uh, this part of, of India. So in terms of neighbor, we have uh, Bhutan and Tibet on the north. We have Bangladesh on the southwest. We have the Siliguri corridor called the Chicken Neck, which is a, a, a band of 20 kilometers of, uh, of land between Bhutan and Bangladesh. And then we have Burma or Myanmar in the southeast. So these are the, the eight states of, uh, of the northeast. I'm going to start with the, the, the first one, which is Assam. Um, as most of the people, when they reach uh, the northeast, they will um, land uh, in, um, in, in, the, in Assam. So the main airport and the capital is Guwahati. And the two other airports will be Jorhat and Di Brugar. So when people arrive uh, about 10 kilometers from the airport, they can reach the beautiful uh, Dipor Bill, which is um, uh, a Ramsar site of Assam, the first one in the uh, first bird sanctuary of Assam. And uh, it has uh, lots of different kind of uh, bird species. Uh, for example, lots of kingfishers, fishing eagles, uh, greater adjutant stork, whistling teal, open bill stork, shoveler, pintail, and a high concentration of pheasant tail jacana. It has also 12 species of lizards, 20 species of amphibians, 6 species of tortoise, and 18 species of snakes. The of indigenous fish uh, in the Porbil. On the right, you can see also uh, the river in Kurkumara, which is about one hour drive uh, west of uh, Guwahati. 
And over there, the villagers and mainly the fishermen are protecting the river dolphin. So there's three uh, spots in uh, Assam, in the Brahmaputra and is uh, affluent where you can spot river dolphin. The two other spots will be Kaziranga and uh, and uh, the third one will be uh, Tinsukia. One of the highlights uh, of the trip, and it's generally we keep the highlight for the end, but in that case, it's just at the beginning because Dadara village is just 20 kilometers from the airport. So after the airport, you just have to cross the Brahmaputra and you reach the beautiful village. Ponam Devi Barman here on the right has raised an army of villagers composed mainly by female and uh, their goal is to protect the greater adjutant stock which is um, an endangered species. Most of the people go to the dump yard in Guwahati to go and spot it but it's very stinky over there so uh, this experience is much much more wholesome. Um, this area hosts 75% of the global population. Uh, the only two other places uh, to see the greater adjutant stock would be in Bihar and in Vietnam. So we have 75% of the population. So the highest chance to spot this, uh, this beauty uh, is, would be in, uh, in Assam. And when you reach this village, uh, you can also uh, have a wholesome experience because you can by the Hargila army. Hargila means uh, bone swallower in uh, Assamese. So it is the nickname of the, of the bird. Most of the people find him quite uh, ugly, but it's quite charming actually. And uh, so you can have a local lunch, experience the, the Assamese food in a, in, a, in a family, in a local family. You can see also the, the women in their free time, they will uh, use their um, hand loom to create beautiful motifs on saris and scarves. Um, and just recently, they are uh, campaigning also to patrol uh, to avoid all the tall trees to be felled because that's the, 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 the trees uh, that the bird is choosing to, to nest in his big trees. They also uh, put nets around the, the tree in case of the chicks falling. It, does, it won't break his legs and he can, he can survive uh, the fall. Uh, for Diwali, they are campaigning also for people to avoid using crackers um, to avoid to scare, scare the bird. Um, they, they are doing many actions. Uh, really, they are really involved in the in the in the local life, and uh, they are doing an amazing job. So, I guess they are really impressed to see like uh, what they can do. So, by just going to this village, it promotes local handicraft, it promotes local culture, and it avoids to go to the to the dump yard. So the next step in Assam will be uh, Manas National Park, which is at the border with Bhutan. Bhutan has a Royal, National, Royal Manas National Park. And we have the Manas National Park. So it's not only a UNESCO Natural World Heritage Site, it's also a tiger reserve, an elephant reserve, and a bio, biosphere reserve. Um, it lies on the foothill of the Himalayas. And Manas is uh, name is because of the Manas River that flows through it. The man, the river uh, border between uh, Bhutan and um, and India. The fauna, it has uh, lots of different species. A few rhinos which have been transferred from um, from Kaziranga. It is all. Um, the, the, the land of uh, Assam wolf turtle, his speed, the golden langur that you can see here at the bottom right, and the pygmy hog, pygmy hog, which is very di difficult to see. Um, it has a breeding center in Nameri, and they are um, every year releasing some, uh, some pygmy hog in, um, in Manas. In term, terms of bird, uh, the flagship species would be the Bengal florican here on the bottom right, which is quite easy to spot on the outskirt of the park. Uh, there is some, uh, some very good guides who know where the bird is, uh, is located and they keep the distance to avoid to, to stop them during courtship and during nesting. 
And so it's a very good option uh, for the Indian uh, grass bird. It's even one of the best location in the world to spot the Indian grass bird, which is also called Rufus Rumped uh, grass bird. Um, in other species would be the uh, swamp francolin, uh, different species of hornbill, Rufus neck and the rest hornbill. Babblers, it would be the marsh and jardins babblers. Um, parrot bill on the pictures, the black breasted parrot bill, pied higher, um, Roxon bush chat, Rufus vented, the loafing thrush, collard owlet, short eared owl, spot bellied uh, eagle owl, and lots of different species from the, from the foothills. The, there is also um, um, a forest bungalow inside where it's quite nice to picnic, it's by the river. And over there, it's a good spot uh, to, um, to spot the collard falconet. So the, the golden langur is mainly on the Bhutanese side, but there is also a, a sanctuary near Manas called the Chakra Shila Wildlife Sanctuary, where it's quite easy to spot the golden langur. So in Manas, you can go for a jeep safari, you can go for river rafting also. So it's not white uh, water, uh, I mean, not big rapids, but it's good for, for birding. You can go to Bhutan uh, for people who don't have the, the permit. You can just cross the border for, for one or two kilometers. And you can also experience the, the tribal life all, all, all over there. The, the main tribe over there is the Bodo, Bodo people. Now we head to Namiri National Park, which is at the border with the next states of Arunachal Pradesh. It's a wood duck, which is mainly spotted in, uh, in Namiri, and also in uh, Dehing Patkai, in the uh, eastern part of, of Assam. And Namiri also has about 400 other species of bird. So compared to Manas, where you will have uh, a bit more mix between mammals and birds, Namiri is really focusing on, on the birds. So you can see the river rafting also is possible in, uh, in Nameri. It's quite uh, soft to stop and, and slow down also to, to see the birds. Um, so for the, um, for the rafting, you can, uh, you can see some, uh, some nice uh, species like the Tibetan ibis bill, the great tikni, some merganser and cormorant, osprey, and oriental hobby. So generally we do jungle walk in the morning and uh, come back to the camp for lunch and in the afternoon will be uh, So the main species I was talking about for uh, rafting would be the, the uh, Tibetan ibis bill and the great technique. Around the camp itself, there is a, uh, the main camp, the oldest camp. You can see hornbills also, rest hornbill, uh, owlet, and um, there is a breeding center for pygmy hog. I was telling about uh, just before. They are breeding the pygmy hog and then they are releasing it to, to Manas National Park. The next destination, which is the most famous, will be Kaziranga National Park, which is the land of the big five. So it's another big five compared to, to the one we just heard about in, uh, in Bandavgar. Um, the, the, the first, uh, flagship species would be the unicorn rhino. Um, Kazianga is the highest population of uh, unicorn rhino in the world. The other places to see the rhino would be uh, uh, Manas, but a uh, much uh, smaller population, and in Chitwan National Park in, uh, in Nepal. The four other species of the big five would be the Royal Bengal of Tiger. We have one of the big density in India. But the big cat is much more shy than the rest of, uh, of India compared to Rantambo or Madhya Pradesh parks. Uh, it's, it's, uh, um, you, you will see the cat for four or five seconds if you're lucky, and then it will uh, go uh, back to the, to the jungle. The third species also would be Asiatic elephant, one of the biggest population in, uh, in India of wild elephants. The Eastern Swamp Deep, also one of the only place in India to see the, the swamp deer will be in, uh, in Kaziranga. And the wild water buffalo, uh, it's one of the only place where you can see the pure uh, wild 
water buffalo because one of the main um, threat to the to this buffalo is actually the crossbreeding with the domesticated one. So in uh, in Manas and in uh, in Kaziranga, you can see the, the the real one with very big, and it's actually more, much more dangerous than the tiger. Uh, it has a poor sight and it's, it's charging quite easily. So there's much more accident with buffalo than than with tigers. Just after uh, Kaziranga, if you go a little bit more on the east near Jorat, you have the Ulongapa Gibbon Wildlife Sanctuary. So the um, Western Ulo Gibbon is the only ape species in um, in India, and it's only located. In, you will find him in most of the space, st states in the, in the Northeast, but in uh, Ulongapa Wildlife Sanctuary, which is a very small sanctuary, it's about uh, 20 square kilometers and it's crossed by uh, a railway track. It's, it's one of the best places. Also, the, the park does not allow any deep safari, so we have to walk inside the park and to go and see the different um, uh, Gibbon uh, families. You sometimes need to go really in the jungle, follow the animal tracks, go into the, um, the elephant tracks. So you need a guard uh, uh, at any time to, to accompany you. Species of, uh, of primates, like the pig tail macaque, the stump tail macaque, the cap langour, and the Assamese macaque. The, the easternmost um, park of, uh, of Northeast will be Dibu Saikova National Park. And I club it with Maguri Bill because it's just adjoining the park and it's the biggest river island national park in India. It's quite famous for the feral horses. So actually um, during the Second World War, uh, the British troops have brought horses uh, to this part of, of India to fight against the Japanese. And when the war was over, the, the horses got released back in the wild. So there is a, a population of, uh, of wild horses now in Dibo Saikova. It's quite difficult to spot because you have to walk. First, you have to take a boat to reach the national park. And then you have to walk all day to, uh, to go to the place where they are, where they are safe. And land over there and, uh, and wetland. So the main species of, of uh, that the birders are looking for in um, Maguri Bill and Dibro Sekova will be the Swamp Quinia and uh, the um, Jadon Babble. Quite good population also of uh, nocturnal bird, like you can see the brown oak here and the scoop all also. Um, Oriental scoop all is quite, uh, is quite famous in this park of, uh, of, um, of India. The Hingpatkai uh, has been on the highlight of newspaper recently because of, uh, um, it, uh, sorry, it is home of uh, seven different species of cats. It has um, the tiger, it has the leopard, leopard cat, and some other species, sorry, I've lost, uh, yes, fishing cat. And all they have been uh, discovered, discovered by a camera trap. So it's quite difficult to, uh, to, to uh, and a total of 47 species of mammals, like the gibbon, the slow loris, uh, pigtail macaque, Chinese pangolin, Himalayan black bear, porcupine, crab eating mongoose, sambar, sun bear, been to wrong barking deer. Bird, uh, it's a very good spot to for the hornbill. This is one of the smallest species of hornbill, the Austin's bone hornbill. The red headed trogon, um, the rufous throated fulveta, and the gray peacock pheasant, the straight wren babbler, many species. And it's not only in the forest, also in the dig boy campus. There are many uh, spots to for, for for birding, so very few people know about this uh, this national park, and it's it's very quite interesting to to go over there. 
Now we go to Arunachal, Arunachal Pradesh. I hope I still have some time. Uh, you too. You let me know if uh, if I'm exceeding my time. Uh, so just a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll just go to Eagle Nest while I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is which is really yeah. the mecca. Yeah, we, 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 we're enjoying it, so you can keep going. <laughs> okay. Which is the mecca of uh, of bird watching in the northeast? It's uh, it's really a true paradise. And it's a really uh, a nice part of the local community uh, to, to have preserved their forest and to have uh, refused modernity uh, for, for conservation because uh, the government wanted to build a bigger road which would be crossing the, their sanctuary and they have decided to say no uh, to the modernity, no to the road uh, to keep the wildlife at peace over there. So the flagship species will be the, the Bugun uh, Lyosikla, which has been only recently discovered. And it's the only place in the world where you can see it. So it has about 16 uh, pairs of, uh, of birds and it's highly uh, located. So it's very, very uh, uh, important for birders when they come in the Northeast to, to visit uh, Eagle Nest. And uh, it's only camping over there. So we have Swiss, uh, Swiss tent over there. So it's quite rustic. There's no attached bathroom, but uh, for people who are really into birding, it's, it's an incredible place. It's, uh, I mean, you can, you can have back neck just by trying to locate the birds because they are really everywhere. And they are much, much uh, less uh, shy than the other states of the, of the Northeast. They are got used to, to, uh, to not be hunted by, by the local community. So you can see they are very colorful, like the, the fire tail is on the, on, the, um, on the right, upper right. Uh, there is some places also quite famous. We call it the Tragopan uh, Trail, where you can see two, two species of Tragopan. Beautiful species of nocturnal birds also. There's no restriction, so you can also go for night safaris. So it's, uh, there's a, a nice place for oxen frogmouth. And the guys are very, very good over there. Uh, and it, it's all year round. The park is open. So the, the autumn and winter, spring will be for birding. Then the monsoon will be for butterfly watching and for snake uh, watching also. It's a, it's a beautiful park. Little bit north, you really get into the Himalayas. Uh, you can uh, reach Dirang and Sangti. So after crossing the border of Arundachal Pradesh, which requires a permit, you will reach Sangti Valley, which is famous for the black naked crane. Uh, the only other place in India to see it would be uh, Ladakh, and also in Bhutan, in the Gangte Valley. And it's also famous for the long, long billed plover, uh, which is quite a uh, species. A uh, little bit on the west side, really at the Bhutanese border, you have Mandala, which we call Little Bhutan. When people are frustrated about not being able, able to go to Bhutan because of the high fees, it's about 200 to $250 per day. I really recommend them to come to this part of the world because in terms of species, it's quite the same. You will find most of the species in Bhutan in this part of the, the world and also the culture of the people. Um, I mean, the Mompa tribe is really close from the Bhutanese tribe. They are used to cross the border and uh, it's, it's really worth it. And the species you can see are really similar from the Bhutan, like the uh, rufous fronted tit, uh, the white bellied west art, the red cross bill, the temang stragopan. There is also a small population of red panda, quite difficult to spot, but if you spend enough days on, uh, in this area, you're, you'll be lucky to, to spot the red panda. Then you can go a little bit higher on the Sela Pass, uh, which reach to Tawang. Like here we are very close from Tibet and to Bhutan. The path is about 3,500 uh, meters high. And uh, despite it be, being very cold and very uh, a dramatic landscape, there's a lot of, of bird species to spot over there. The main species would be the snow partridge, uh, the Grandala, the Gould Shortwing, the Alpine Accenture, so lots of, uh, of species can be spotted there. So if you live wrong, like three or four o'clock in the morning, you can reach the, the pass for sunrise. Action time in the, 
in, uh, in the Cela pass. Uh, I continue with Paquet Tiger Reserve, which is another uh, beautiful uh, conservation program because you can see uh, the Nishi tribe over there. They used to hunt um, the hornbill for their beak that they were using on their headgear. And uh, now the hunters don't use their, their beak anymore. The, the one you see on the screen is actually a wooden one. And they have become nest protectors. So they are here to make sure that uh, the trees are not fell and that there's no uh, predators will go next to the nest, that the chick is protected and that uh, the male is coming to the female to feed the, the, the chick and the female after, after the, the chick has come out from the egg. So it, it has been one of my best memory in the Northeast when you can see uh, the male uh, hornbill coming to the nest to feed the female will be just uh, sitting for months in the small uh, hole that she, she will she will close with some mud uh, to be about two hours, uh, 30, 40 seeds and fruits uh, that he will uh, give back to his, uh, to his partner. It's a true uh, uh, symbol of love and dedication because if the male is killed by a hunter or injured or eaten by another animal, the, the female is doomed. The, the, the female and the chick will not survive. It's a nice, the blithe kingfisher, which is one of the rarest species of kingfisher in, uh, in India. The two other places where you can find it will be uh, at least in the Northeast in Pake National, uh, Pake Valley, sorry, in uh, near Zero and in Deng Patkai also. Good, uh, good population also in Pake of gray peacock pheasant. In March, April, it's the mating time, so they, you can hear them like all over the, all over the jungle. And uh, quite few mammals also, like uh, crestless por porcupine, uh, also some clouded leopards. So you can go also by jeep or by foot inside the uh, inside the park. And I will finish quickly uh, with Dibong uh, and the Mishmi and the uh, highest uh, birding hotspot after Eagle Nest in the Northeast. So it's, it's at the easternmost part of, uh, of Arunachal. And, uh, and there, the, the bird species also are, are incredible. People will also uh, try to go for the Sclatter's uh, Monal, which is very, very difficult to spot. Uh, but other species would be the Rusty's Froaty, the Ren Babbler, which uh, you can see the beautiful slender Bill Sintar Babbler with his long, uh, with long beak. Uh, salt wing also that can be spotted in both uh, area, uh, Eagle Nest and, uh, and Mishmi Hills. So I can continue like that. I have, I have just covered uh, very briefly two, uh, two states out of the seven st uh, eight states, if we include Sikkim. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, this short presentation and, uh, and let me know, let us know um, it which you want uh, us to maybe continue in, a, in the next session in a few months. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lorenz. Uh, I think Northeast is just beautiful. And, uh, and, and, and I think, thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge. And uh, to me, I thought only probably Kaziranga was the place, you know, but I think there is so much more, more to it. So thank you no. so much, and we we'll definitely look forward to having you again in one of the sessions. Uh, in Kaziranga, so, so many times I visited the place, and I was I was crossing maybe two or three cars. It, it's completely from the other the parks in, uh, in India. Can you hear me? That's bad. Okay, so in, in Kaziranga, you don't have to book uh, safaris in advance. You don't have to be like in line after 10, uh, 10 cars. It's, it's, it's really preserved from us tourism and it's a very peaceful park compared to, to the, 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 the other parks in, uh, in India. Yeah, good. Thank you, Arrange. That, yeah. that was wonderful. And you're absolutely right. Um, this is a whole new world for the vast majority of us in, in many ways. Um, and um, yeah, again, there are, you know, as, as, as Tamara has just written there, she says, you know, any information on wildlife sanctuaries in Nagaland? I mean, there's, as you say, there's another three or four states 
um, that we should be absolutely focusing on. And yes, I think we should. We'll put we'll we'll back you in for another for another um, all the other parks and statues. Yeah. It is extraordinary. Thirty seven national parks and over a hundred you know other wildlife sanctuaries so this is an absolute joy for anyone who loves we, we wildlife need, loves trekking walking we, we you, need people to come because it's quite fragile i mean there's so many projects yeah but a really and a hydro project you know it's if, if if local people see uh, domestic and foreigners to our block coming and taking an interest in their in their paradise because it's like our national is 80 percent uh, of the total territory covered with forest, it's 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 incredible. But we need we really need people. To, I mean, to put it on the map uh, for some responsible tourism and, and and showcase it more because it's also very fragile and and endangered. No, well, that's exactly right. And and so tourism can do that. I mean, uh, is what's happening is is it being done well? I mean, I know that there's been lots of conservation action there, and and tourism is very low key. But you know. Uh, are they, I mean, are the states trying to uh, make it as uh, sort of most sustainable as they can? No, I, know I mean, governments, they are really pushing for, for, for modernization. There's been some plan for palm oil uh, cultivation, which is being pushed, hydro projects, illegal yeah, I know uh, logging. It's, it's, uh, it's quite scary at the same time, you know, because once it's gone, it's gone forever. And we really, tourism right now is the only solution to, to, to start promoting and, uh, and, and keep conserving this, all these beautiful species. Yeah, no, well, okay. Well, I think there should be some concerted effort. We'll try and try and do that. I mean, I, funny enough, tough tigers and our, and our own influence in that area is very, is very small. And, and maybe we need to, to up the ante. I know that there's not many, um, lodges and things to stay at that accommodation is quite r rustic and business. it's not a big problem for those who are very adventurous yeah, and, and travelers not so, really any, anymore um, i mean i mean it has it has changed compared to maybe the 10 uh, last years we can see also the, the kind of people who are coming before it was backpackers and and only people who have been to india four or five times the road condition also which people thought was very bad has also improved I mean, yeah. now we have four lanes also from Guati to Kaziranga. It's a very smooth drive. It's it's changing quite uh, uh, quite fast uh, in in these uh, past few years. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So so you're right. So tomorrow is just just mentioned how how a lot of the sort of footfall in the region is is a lot of development is is um poor and there's a lot of stuff that would be really bad for a lot of the biodiversity in these areas so um sort of major challenge um and we should seek to try and try and encourage you know the best tourism nature tourism you know travelers responsible tourism we possibly can get into these into these areas as a as a way forward as a as a different approach um so absolutely yeah so I, I'll um, we, we should concentrate that and, and maybe talk a little bit more about that in the future, Lourish, because you you know you obviously have a great passion for the place, and there are others um, who are probably listening who'd also do the same thing. So we should maybe encourage it much more, and, and we're not representative there enough, really. So huge yeah, thanks, thanks for that. That's really interesting. And yeah, let's look at the other states. Um, I mean, are you very familiar with the other states um, and their and their heritage, natural heritage? Norish, are you are you very yeah. familiar with, with yeah, the other? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we'll we'll get you back because I think there's obviously a, a need and a requirement to to get you back. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much.